Thank you, Sarah Vanna. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here. Um, wow, you know, when I joined Microsoft the first week, uh, quite a few people asked why. So uh, it was interesting that, uh, that you thought the same thing. In fact, somebody sent me an email and said, you're joining the BizTalk team. Um, you know it's dead, right? Um, it's either dead or it's on life support. In fact, here's a link to a uh, post on the internet in 2011 that said it's either dead or on life support, and they were debating it, and there was 46 comments about whether it was dead or on life support. So if you've wondered if, it, if BizTalk was, has been, is either dead or on life support since 2011, just raise your hand so I can see if this, if this crowd wondered if it was dead or on life support. All right, well that means that, good, that means that uh, the person that sent me that email it was completely clueless. That's really good to know that. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really exci excited to be with the team. Um, in terms of answering the question why, uh, it's a good question. Um, just, I think all of us watching Microsoft over the last couple of years are really intrigued by watching some of the changes that are going on. And in, in terms for me, uh, the first thing that was on the radar was, was you know, I was also one of the believers that, that I didn't understand Windows 8 at all. I was trying to figure out where they were going with Windows 8. And so when, when they started working on Windows 10, and they really started engaging the community and the users to help fine tune Windows 10, I saw that as a major shift. And I started paying attention uh, to uh, uh, Microsoft at that point, because I saw the fact that they were re-engaging with users. And, uh, and being in the enterprise, working in the, uh, in the in IT and the enterprise for the last several years, um, I often wondered if Microsoft was forgetting about the enterprise customer uh, and, um, and focusing more on the consumer. And so all, all, you know, I started seeing some changes in terms of some of the on-premise uh, software starting to get updated and started to see a real change in terms of really focusing more on the enterprise. Uh, and so when they approached me to join the team um, and, I, and I went through the loop and, and um, some of the people I loop with are in the front row, and, and we started talking through things. I, their, their passion and their excitement to really re-engage with the community and figure out what is Microsoft's integration strategy? Really, you know, what is the story uh, for integration? And, uh, and the debates that we had during that loop, um, I think that was the hook. That was the hook because they're so passionate in finding the answer for that. So what I hope to share with you over the next hour is the Microsoft integration story. Um, we've, given it, we, we've given it a lot of thought. I want to thank uh, Saravana again for doing, hosting this event because events like this are forcing uh, uh, activities for us. Uh, there's been a lot of change, a lot of discussion within Microsoft over the last 90 days as we've prepared for this event. Uh, and if you wonder why the, you know, some of you that traveled, how many of you traveled from the US like, like us? So um, you can blame me for canceling the April event. Um, we weren't ready, uh, and, uh, um, and we needed to be ready. And so we spent that extra, that extra time really asking those questions that we felt that we needed to have answered before, we, before we, uh, we got in front of this audience. So a lot of the things that you're going to be hearing about um, over the next uh, couple days and, and the great things that are going to happen in the hallway, the discussions that we're going to have, it's all fresh. It's all new. It's all, it's all new thought. Uh, you're going to be seeing some demos today that have not been shared with anybody outside of the team. Um, the only people that have seen the, the information that we're sharing here is our senior leadership. So you are, for the first time, we're going to see uh, the information that we've been working on uh, for the last 90 days. So, so part of really what I want to dig into today is really talking about the vision and sharing with you Microsoft's vision when it comes to um, to integration and integration in the enterprise and integration uh, for all of, the all of the users within the enterprise. And so today what we're going to go through the vision all the way through and we're going to even talk about some roadmap. Um, but really I want to draw a picture of, of where our vision is and then the folks that are going to, my team that's going to follow uh, after me are going to dive into more and more details. So I'm going to try to start maybe at the 20,000 foot view and maybe get down to the 10, maybe even 5,000 foot view and then let them take it from there. 
So I wanted to kind of start off with the cloud. I mean, we all know, I'm saying this tongue in cheek, but we all know the cloud is where it's at, right? I mean, everything is in the cloud. I mean, and that's where we need to get to. That's the messaging we've been giving you uh, for, I think we started in 2009, started really messaging, you got to get to the cloud. The cloud is where it's at. The cloud is where all the economics are. The cloud, any company that's not in the cloud, uh, it doesn't get on the cloud bandwagon, it's going to go out of business. I mean, that's, that was just kind of the messaging and everything that we, uh, that we turned on. And, um, and the thing about that was, is we were actually uh, a little bit wrong on that one. Um, what we really found out was, you know what, there is a lot of businesses running on-prem. On and there, you know, a lot of those businesses that grew up uh, and, and got to be big businesses did so by, by investing very heavily in their on-prem infrastructure. Uh, and so that whole race to the cloud, um, yeah, we kind of got that one uh, a little wrong. What we should have really said was, we want to help you with a story to allow, allow you to take any workload you want to the cloud. But if you want to have, if you want to have uh, a line of business applications that uh, are on-prem, then knock it out. If, that, if your business calls for doing stuff on-prem, then stay there. If you're a brand new startup and you want to build that whole startup in the cloud, I totally get that. But in, you know, I spent the last uh, two and a half years working for a $3 billion company where we had 5% of our activity in the cloud and the rest of it was on-prem. That company grew to $3 billion over 15, over 15 years by doing 21 acquisitions. I had seven different point of sale systems. They didn't like to retire anything. We had over 1,000 applications from those acquisitions, and we were trying to maintain all of, the, all of that. And then we were asked to start trying to figure out how to modernize those, those applications. And when I walked in that organization and looked at their integration strategy, guess what I saw? I saw point-to-point -point integration throughout all of these systems. Does this sound familiar? I mean, it's like when I talked, when I sat down with the CIO and I said, I said, have you guys not thought about any kind of strategy to get a handle on your integration strategy? And he goes, Jim, it works. We don't want to spend any money on it, all right? That's the keep our lights on strategy, all right? So we want, you know, we, in, in order to invest in that, uh, that brand new shiny stuff, well, we only have 5% of our budget for that. So let's, so, so in terms of, yes, modernize this and get, it, and get IT working for, at the speed of business, but at the same time, don't break anything, right? So, so that whole concept of on-prem and cloud, we had to be very, very thoughtful about that. And so when we thought about integration, we thought, well, does it really make sense to do all of the workload integrations in the cloud when all it's, all it's doing is, is integrating on-prem? So ap applications, why would we take everything that's on-prem, kick it up to the cloud, kick it back down to our, our on-prem again? How, why does that make any sense? But yet that's what, that's what uh, you know, some of the vendors were pitching us to do. And so we started looking at, well, we need to have a hybrid solution. If we're going to be doing integrations between our on-prem applications, well, we want to do all of that workload and stuff on-prem. If, we have, if we're going to be connected up to the cloud, well, then we should go up to the cloud, do that, and make a decision where that, or, that orchestration for that workload should happen in the cloud, or, or we should just grab data, bring it back down, and do the orchestrations on-prem. And we really started being thoughtful about that strategy. And so that's really the kind of thing that we're talking about in terms of, as we look at our Microsoft strategy, in terms of empowering you to have similar thoughts and to be able to decide how you wanted to run your integration strategy. It's your integration strategy. We just want to empower you to be able to do it the way you want to do it and not force you down any, uh, any kind of framework that you have to follow uh, for ours. We're going to empower you to do integration on your terms and the way that you want to do that. So some of the questions we, you know, we hear, and there's quite a bit, quite a bit more on it I, that I wanted to kind of talk through is, you know, how do we leverage our current investment? Right? We've already invested in BizTalk. At TrueBlue, we invested, we, we, had, we had enterprise BizTalk in place. We had a huge investment in BizTalk. So, you know, we didn't want it, we really didn't want to take it out and put something else in. You know, that was an investment, that was an investment we already made. Not an investment just in hardware and software, but training people. You know, that skills-based training. And you, and you and I, all, you guys know better than anybody how long it takes to get up to speed on BizTalk, right? So, um, so we went through that investment. So we really wanted to leverage that. But at the same time, we were trying to figure out, well, we, just, we brought in applications like Workday in the cloud. How are we going to integrate Workday into our system? 
uh, how are we going to integrate all of that, that capability, all that new functionality into our on-prem? And, and those were the challenges and stuff that we faced. Uh, and then we also had other things that aren't on the screen on, in terms of our business constantly asking us, move faster, IT. You've got to move faster. You've got you, you to get, get going at the speed of business. You can't hold us back. So we can't continue to put tickets in and have you guys and wait on you guys to do everything. So you guys have to figure out ways to help empower us. And so, so that, was, that was the mindset that we started to have uh, within IT. And we started to figure out, well, how can we do that? So in terms, of, in terms of how we're approaching this at Microsoft, we're really thinking about what is our total vision. And what I want to do is just quickly paint that for you today. So it starts with BizTalk. BizTalk is our on-prem uh, um, workflow engine. It's, it's, what, 16 years old now. It was released in 2000. It's acid tested in terms of reliability and, and what it can do. Does it have, does it have some challenges in terms of diff, uh, ease of use and, and uh, hard to learn? And, and could it be a little bit more modern and those kinds of things? Yeah, it could. It absolutely could. could. And we are going to start focusing on some of those things. But I want you to know and I want you to hear this very, very clearly. We are investing in BizTalk. We are investing strong in BizTalk. And I hope over the next three days, you really, not only are we going to say it, but you're going to see it in terms of some of the things that we're going to be doing. So BizTalk is part of that, of that strategy. It is our on-prem solution. And then we have Logic Apps. And Logic Apps is our SaaS-based connector. It gives us the ability to connect to a wide range of uh, SaaS products. Uh, and it does a really good job at that. But it's, you know, it's a year old. It's still in preview. We're still working out uh, some of the functionality. And, and those of you that are on the journey with us today and with Logic Apps knows, know that we are making a lot of changes. We are iterating a lot. You know, that is a true agile, agile product. And the team can tell you that you know, it's, they pushed a version last night. Can you believe it? Before a demo, they go and push a brand new version of Logic Apps as <laughs> we're getting ready to do all these demos. I mean, that just shows you they are just, their hair's on fire, they're going 100 miles an hour. It's just like, hey, good, good luck with the demos, guys. We got your back. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Charles. I appreciate, I appreciate that, <laughs> that confidence. Don't worry, guys. We're good. But so Logic Apps and BizTalk is the heart of our integration strategy. It gives us the ability to, to be on-prem, and it gives us the ability to be uh, in the cloud. And it really is the heart of, of the integration strategy. But, but then we start looking at what are those vital organs around, around that strategy. And, and the first one is, is our API management story. Um, I don't think we've, uh, uh, we've really talked enough about API management. I, I got to see it first, firsthand because I introduced API management at True Blue. They had never even heard of API management when I walked in. Uh, you know, again, all these systems and uh, monolithic applications and, and no management around API. So that means we had 70 developers and every time we hired a new developer, uh, they had no idea what APIs were available. There was no documentation. We had, I know we had duplication of code across, not, not just across systems, but duplication in code in our systems uh, because it wasn't well, well declared, uh, uh, it was undiscoverable. And so when we really think about APIM, uh, we really think about really making those uh, uh, applications more discoverable. I look at APIM a little bit differently. I'm probably looking at it through a little bit different lens than most. And as I see, when I see APIM, what I see are small connectors. Small connectors into my point of sale system. Small connectors into my pay payroll system. Small connectors into uh, my accounts uh, payable system. And all that really does is gives me all kinds of amazing thoughts when it comes to triggers and actions. I want to trigger on this, and I want to be able to do that. And when I really start thinking in terms of API and making, making that available to everybody in IT, and all of my IT pros and all of my developers, and giving them the ability to say, when an order comes in, I want to be able to do that. Uh, when a pay, payment comes in, I want to be able to do that and really start opening that up. It's not just about empowering mobile development. It's not just about empowering additional web development. Uh, it's really about starting to really think about integration in a whole different way. The next is um, Azure Service Bus. Another, uh, it's our number one connector uh, in Logic Apps. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just amazing to me the amount of workload that that uh, Azure Service Bus can handle in terms of its, you know, its uh, topics and queues and and um, you know, the publish subscribe volume that goes through that. 
Uh, and we are uh, constantly looking at ways that we can build a more native experience within Logic Apps to take care of that. So we really believe we're, we're, we're doubling down on Azure Service Bus and we're doubling down on APIM. But that's not, that doesn't finish the whole story. The next part of, of understanding our true vision is to understand the amount of connectors now that we're starting to create. These are connectors that our team, we have a gateway and connectors team uh, within Microsoft that's creating all of these rich connectors uh, into uh, the more popular um, SaaS-based uh, products. These are all authored by our team, uh, and we're learning, we're le learning about uh, not just about how to write connectors, but really how to be thoughtful about the kinds of triggers and actions that you want to be able to do with those APIs and going back to the, going back and looking at how to make those things richer. Uh, we've got um, over 30 of the connectors already uh, available for Logic Apps today, and the team is now, uh, again, that team is, is fairly new as well. They started, they, we uh, kind of reorg at the exact same time that I came on in February, and now we're starting to see that team really start uh, uh, coming up to speed. So you're going to start seeing a tremendous amount of additional uh, connectors coming out. Um, oh, forgot to push that. So that gives you an idea of some of them that we're working on or that are already are out. Um, and then we have Azure Services. Azure Services really is our secret sauce. And this is why you guys are in such a great position today, because when you really take a look at, uh, at our heart of our integration story, and you start thinking about APIM and Azure Service Bus, and you look at our connectors, you know, you can say, well, yeah, some of the competitors are, are close and having similar things. But then all of a sudden, we drop the bomb, don't we? We start showing you Azure, Azure services and all of the rich capabilities that that provides. And I'm going to be going into a little bit more detail on this uh, after we do a couple demos for you. But uh, um, it really is our secret sauce. And you know what? It's your secret sauce. For those of you that are our customers, it's your secret sauce in the enterprise to be able to do some amazing things uh, for your business that are going to make them think that, wow, how did you guys just completely help us get modern here? when we start looking at the things that machine learning can do and the things that, that cognitive services can do and IoT can do. And these are all services that we're going to make it extremely simple for you to, well, I shouldn't say simple, right? You should never use the word simple. We're going to make it faster for you to be able to, uh, to integrate into these services. Anytime you hear me say simple, just go ahead and hit me over the head. Because we all know, we all know it's, it's, uh, it's, it's maybe that's the wrong word to use. And then last but not least is the B2B uh, and the EDI capabilities that BizTalk has uh, that you guys have used for years in terms of our X12 and Edifax over AS2 capabilities. We're bringing that capabilities and the capabilities that you've seen us um, deploy with, uh, with BizTalk services. We're bringing all of that technology into, into uh, Logic Apps. Uh, and so it's going to be a first class experience within the Logic Apps platform as well. So that is the vision. That is the, that is the vision of uh, Microsoft integration. And there's one more piece. Two weeks ago, we introduced a new product called Microsoft Flow. How many of you read about Microsoft Flow? Just to kind of get a little idea. We'll be showing that to you a little bit later today in, in, a, in a demo. Microsoft Flow is, um, is built on top of Logic Apps. It's a little different experience. Logic Apps requires you to be in Azure. It requires you to be in the Azure portal. Um, and we're also, uh, I'll just go ahead and, and tell you right now, we're creating a visual stu studio experience for, uh, for Logic Apps as well. And uh, so you'll be hearing about that later today. So I just stepped on Jeff's little uh, uh, news. Um, but the cool thing about it is uh, Microsoft Flow doesn't require Azure. It doesn't require um, uh, having that, that ex experience of, or that, that, having that ability to have to go into the Azure portal. Because I don't know about you, but the very first time I went in the Azure portal, I was like, oh, ooh, ooh, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, and uh, so we were trying to figure out, really, how do we meet our company mission, right? Microsoft has a very, very deep mission, and that is to basically empower everybody, every person in every organization on the planet to achieve more. One of the things that we really tried to work on at True Blue was how can we empower our corporate citizens to be able to do more without having to ask IT to do it? How could we really empower them to do more? Uh, because if they, can do, if they can do some of the stuff, then we don't have to do that. Uh, then we can get more of the harder stuff done, right? So 
Microsoft Flow uh, achieves that. Microsoft Flow gives you the ability to do very, very um, uh, well orchestrated um, workflows. So, for example, if you if an email comes into your uh, uh, Outlook and you want to have a you you want to get a text message because it's from your boss and you want to get a text message alert. Uh, it, it's those kinds of quick integra integrations. You want to get a you want to get a text message if uh, something updates in your SharePoint. Uh, the users can go in and just just click click click, follow a template, uh, uh, and it's that simple. Uh, it's really designed to be self-service. It's really designed to, to to walk that user through a very simple experience. Now, why is Microsoft Flow good for that for us? A couple reasons. Number one, we're opening up. Uh, the whole concept of workflow to tens of thousands of people. Why that is good is because that means that Microsoft is, is investing in the engine, the orchestration of, of that power. So that means all of those 10,000 users really becomes our biggest, biggest customer for Logic Apps. So it's doubling down on the investment of Logic Apps by coming out with Flow. It's Microsoft saying, we're betting on this technology. We're going to continue to invest in this technology, and you should invest, as, you should invest with us. Um, it's not going away. You don't have to worry about Logic Apps just, you know, all of a sudden a year from now, just us saying, oh, you know, sorry, we're going, to go, we're going to change directions and go somewhere else. Uh, Flow is, gives us that ability to be able to, to reach the rest of the folks. Uh, that, that besides the developers and the IT pros, those of you in the audience, it allows us to, to, to reach those information workers, those power users, those folks that uh, really know SharePoint extremely well, those folks in Excel that like to do all kinds of crazy things with those worksheets, those, and, and, and also people just want to do simple, simple orchestrations. The other great thing that Microsoft Flow, we're already seeing this, since we announced Microsoft Flow two weeks ago, the number of companies that are calling us up saying, hey, we want to build connectors. We, we want you to open up your ecosystem so we can, you know, you guys don't have to build all the connectors. We'll start providing connectors for our SaaS-based applications. We believe with this strategy, we're going to see hundreds, if not a thousand connectors someday. Uh, and that's going to be good for us because we'll be able to utilize those same connectors for Logic Flow or Logic Apps, whatever their name is today. Okay. So let's talk. Let's let's go a little deeper into uh, some of our uh, strategy um, in terms of where we're going. So first, uh, BizTalk uh, 2016. It's our first update since 2013. It's in CTP1 uh, today. Uh, my hat off to John Fancy, who has been driving this one extremely hard. Uh, and yeah, we can give him a we can give him a round. He's uh, a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. Um, it, first of all, a complete refresh across uh, our platform, and um, uh, and I see you, Sanju. I, don't worry, I got I got you coming up here in a second, so don't worry about it. Uh, I got I got your back. Sanju is our uh, lead developer for the BizTalk team. He's going to be here, and uh, and I'm going to introduce him in just a just a moment, so he can be thinking about that because uh, he didn't know that that's going to happen. Um, so it's a complete, uh, BizTalk uh, 2016 is a complete refresh across uh, our server products uh, as well as SQL. It always it also supports our SQL always on uh, capabilities. And then we also have uh, BizTalk and IaaS, uh, which we've seen a lot of our partners starting to adopt a, a managed service uh, a program with their customers where they'll manage BizTalk for them and, and, uh, on Azure, where they'll take care of all, all of the BizTalk updates as well as the server up, up, upgrades. Uh, and be able to allow them to host uh, uh, BizTalk on, uh, on Azure. Uh, th this, this product is, uh, is uh, extremely well uh, streamlined. Uh, Sanjiv and John have done a great job in terms of getting to hitting CTP on time. We are on track to hit CTP2 uh, on time, and we are going to be on, on time for RTM. That, that product is, is pretty teed up, even though uh, they've got some exciting things to, uh, to show you later today. Uh, Logic Apps is our solution for uh, cloud-based um, uh, connectivity in terms of uh, uh, integration work. So um, it's, a, it's still in preview today. We are working, those of you that are, that are along that journey with us know that we're iterating. Uh, we're, we've got two-week sprints. We're iterating uh, quite rapidly. We do feel like we're in the final loop uh, of, uh, of hitting that home stretch in order to get that product GA'd. 
Uh, we know a lot of you are waiting for GA before you can actually start playing with it or deploying with it. We just want to make sure we get it right. So and that's what we're doing now. We're, uh, we're bringing that, uh, that product home. Um, and I, all I can say is right now it's so close that I'm just going to say coming soon. Um, the check is in the mail. So I'm, I think you've heard that one before as well. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, BizTalk and Logic Apps and why we believe they're better together. As we know, you've got BizTalk that uh, you have your line of business applications. All of your line of business applications, if, if you've really uh, been doing integration for a while, you hopefully most of your line of business applications are going through BizTalk, right? And so you're used to that kind of uh, orchestration, and uh, that's how you've got things set up. And then we've got Logic Apps, where we've got Logic Apps that will talk to uh, a, a cloud-based uh, SaaS product, where Salesforce is a very popular one. Uh, probably one of our, our most popular in the enterprise. Um, so then you have that. But what you don't have is you don't have really any, any ability for BizTalk to really talk to Logic Apps. Well, happy to announce, beginning today, you have a BizTalk adapter to Logic Apps. So now you'll be able to uh, uh, take information that goes from your line of business application, put it into BizTalk, have BizTalk take it to Logic Apps, and then Logic Apps can take it to uh, any connector you want. So let's talk about what that scenario might look like. So in this, in this particular example, um, again, using an example where you have a point of sale system that maybe ha has access to thousands of retail locations. So your retail location, your point of sale is in those retail locations and, and that's where your customer service reps enter their orders, right? So they enter their order and, um, uh, and, the, and but your sales force out in the field, uh, they're not in the point of sales system. Your sales force in the field is using Salesforce as an example. We could you say Dynamics CRM as well if you wanted to use that example, right? Um, and, the, and the complaint that we had at True Blue was the sales folks, we had 2,500 sales folks, they would say, we, we don't, we're going and calling on a customer. They placed an order that morning. We didn't even know the order came in because uh, we didn't get notification of that order. Uh, so it really would be nice if, if our orders were kept up to date in, in Salesforce. And so now, uh, with, uh, with this combination, uh, an order can come into your point of sale system. It gets shipped over to uh, BizTalk. BizTalk looks up the customer ID and then packages it all up, gives it the Logic Apps. Logic Apps talks to Salesforce, puts the order in, and it's done. And now the salespeople within seconds know about the order. And then you can do all kinds of great workflows within Salesforce at that point to let the, the sales team know. You can update opportunities and do all kinds of really cool things. So, so that... Uh, is the scenario. I'd like John to come up and show it to you. Hello? Can you hear me? Great, right. Let's get this show on the road. So, what I'm going to show you now is uh, something we've been building and working really hard at. I'm going to give Sanjeev a, a, another call out as uh, the dev manager for BizTalk. We've been working extremely hard over the last few weeks on this. Take a stand up and uh, show everybody. <laughs> this is something we've been thinking about for a while. Um, and, you know, as Jim said, today we're going to actually show you it for real. Um, so, uh, to that scenario, um, what I'm going to do is I, I've just got a you know, just as really simple uh, auto processing system. We're going to build on this during the rest of the day, and you know, uh, the session next in BizTalk, we're going to build on it, and then later this afternoon we'll build on it some more and add more capabilities to this. So I'm going to uh, receive uh, a new order, and I'm just going to use our trusted uh, file adapter to do that. I'm going to parse that out, and then I'm going to uh, see whether um, that's a new customer or not. Um, I'm going to do a lookup to determine whether it's a new customer, and then I'm going to push that to Salesforce.com and create an account. So. Uh, you know, as you can see, just a really, really simple orchestration to start off with, where I'm just receiving a message and then I'm going to call out to salesforce.com. So, um, let me show you how this works. So, I'm going to use a trusty debug viewer so you can see what's going on, and I'm going to, well, you just saw Salesforce there, so let's just refresh the accounts. Uh, just a, a recent one widget company, I'm going to create a new one. So, if I flip over to my order, uh, let's just open this up. This is kind of what this thing looks like. I've got a company called Acme, and I'm gonna just drop this file in, let BizTalk pick it up, and then BizTalk's gonna connect to Salesforce and, uh, and create a new account in Salesforce. 
So let's just do that. Uh, yep. And it should, uh, whoops, it should pick this thing up. I can click on the mouse. Uh, let's flip across. You see something's happening here. It's received the order. It says sends to Salesforce. Then I get a message back. That message is actually contains the ID of the object that it just created to Salesforce using our new adapter. And I'm just then spitting it out from BizTalk. So let's, uh, let's see if that really happened. If I flip back to um, uh, Salesforce and just refresh the accounts, you can see here it is. Here's my new account. It's pretty bare. It's pretty empty. But it's kind of just shows you know, how the interaction between these two things work. So. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So let's, let's uh, just have a quick look and, uh, uh, at the admin console, which uh, uh, you may notice has changed a little bit. Um, so uh, as I said, I'll go into this in far more detail later. But um, what I can show you is the send port here. You can see we have a new adapter type logic app. And if you just click configure on this, it's just like a super simple UI um, to reflect how easy it is to connect uh, logic app to BizTalk server. I just uh, I, I sign in and I can pick a subscription, pick a resource group, uh, which is where my logic apps are deployed, and then I can just you know uh, click down on my logic app, pick a logic app, and uh, I'm good to go. Once I've done that, and I've got a port, obviously I can just connect that to my orchestration. I can send messages through to Salesforce.com. Okay, back to you. All right. Thank you, John. So that was pretty cool, right? It looks pretty simple. I mean, if I can do it, it's got to be pretty simple. Um, the really cool thing is we use Salesforce as an example, right? But what I really want you to just envision for a second is um, you can push up to anything, any, any of our connectors. Uh, and through Logic Apps, you can get access to even custom APIs and any of those cloud-based things. So just think about the scenarios for a second of what that really lights up. Uh, right out of this talk in terms of making those simple, uh, um, again, I use the word simple, uh, uh, make it faster for you to, uh, to connect to these SaaS-based uh, applications. So um, um, we, we just think it's going to really make things um, a lot more powerful for you when you're talking about um, new, new systems and stuff that come into your enterprise and you want to be able to, uh, to move uh, information around from on-prem to on the cloud. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about these vital organs that, we, that I talked about earlier, the APIM and the Azure Service Bus, um, and, and some of the things that we're thinking about in terms of additional uh, native support for Logic Apps in terms of how it, how it consumes that. First of all, for Service Bus, we're, we're really listening to our customers, and what we're hearing is right now we're doing polling uh, on our topics. and, um, uh, and uh, so that means that Logic Apps goes out about every 15 seconds and says, hey, do you have anything for me, and then, and then grabs it. And really what we're finding out is that um, we really need to have more of a push, push model. So that's what the team is, is currently going to be looking at. Uh, um, we've got a plan for a couple sprints away, but uh, we're going to be looking at those kinds of richer experiences. In terms of APIM, um, we've, uh, we're also starting to explore how do we do a richer experience with a APIM, and we've got Vladimir here with the APIM team, uh, and we really want to hear what, what some of you think that we should be doing uh, in terms of uh, discovery uh, and then the types of integrations we can do between Logic Apps and APIM. What some of our customers have been telling us is, hey, it would really be wonderful if right from Logic Apps I can see uh, what APIs are available. Uh, so as the development teams are creating new APIs uh, for the point of sale systems as an example, that, that when the IT pros go into Logic Apps, uh, they can see those, ap they, those uh, APIs and they can see what triggers and actions are available right, right, right from there. And they, they just have that first class experience. Uh, we've also heard folks say, really would it be nice to go into APIM and see all the Logic Apps that an API is using. So those are just some of the things to kind of get you thinking about how we can create a, a better uh, together uh, story. Um, and then we have Azure Services, and um, you know, again, this this to me is probably um, the thing that gets my heart racing is it, a lot faster in terms of all of the things that are that are possible with Azure Services. And I just want to I want to run through a couple a couple scenarios uh, quickly and just kind of give you again just try to paint the vision for you. First of all, we have a new product called Azure Functions. It was announced at Build 
Uh, Azure Functions allows us to put, uh, basically have serverless uh, code run uh, on demand. Uh, so the, the typical scenario is uh, you have lo logic apps grab some data from Salesforce and you want to do some manipulation to that data before you send it off to uh, whatever your final endpoint is going to be. Uh, and so instead of trying to do that uh, transformation within the logic apps uh, uh, code view, you can just write a simple function in line uh, and pass that data right from logic apps into the function, get the output, and then continue on through your, work, your workflow. Uh, it's all in line. You don't have to spin up any VMs. You don't have to create, uh, uh, you don't have to go write an API somewhere. You can just put all of that code in a function uh, and it's, 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 it's just consumed any time that that logic app fires. It's really slick and we're going to be showing you that uh, later today as well. Um, and then there's a couple other services that, um, that I wanted to call out. Uh, one of them is, because we met with this team on Friday, and I, and I, think, it, I think it communicates two things. Number one, um, all of the, within Microsoft, um, you know, we, we are large teams across a big campus. Um, but really what I've seen in the last 90 days is the campus has shrunk. Um, because we're starting to hear from all of our Azure server uh, uh, program leaders. Uh, and that's really what they are. The, fo the folks, the dev leaders that are here today and the program uh, managers, uh, leaders that are here today, I use the term leaders because they are leaders of these products. Um, I think of every single one of these gentlemen as the CEOs of these businesses. I really do, because they now, they now own these products. And that's, that's under uh, Sauté's leadership as well in terms of us being able to really have leadership uh, and ownership. And so we're seeing that across all of the Azure uh, team. So the Cognitive Services Group came and visited us on Friday uh, and said, hey, we want to we create a first class connector for Logic Apps. And I said, great, let's talk about how, wh what you want to do. And they said, well, we have this really uh, cool uh, uh, feature called the Sentiment uh, uh, API. And of course, uh, Jeff Holland says, oh yeah, I know all about it. I wrote a custom API into that. And I said, really, Jeff, what do you use the Sentiment API for? He goes, well, the Sentiment API, what it's designed to do is we can have our Twitter stream coming in, and it can, uh, it can uh, uh, basically score each tweet, and it gives me a real-time view of if people are happy or sad across Twitter for any period of time, from a day, week, month, uh, even per hour. Like right now, during the event, we could put it, put it on Integrate 2016, and we could see if you guys like what I'm saying or hate what I'm saying in real time, right? And so Jeff was like, yeah, so I, I can use it for that. And I said, really, so what do you do with that information? He goes, well, what I do is when a positive tweet comes in, I send it to me because it really makes my day. And when a negative tweet comes in, I send it off to Kevin Lamb and ruin his day. And I said, oh, well, that's a great, that's a super great use, use case for, uh, uh, for use how uh, uh, that sentiment uh, uh, in engine works. But then we were talking with another uh, customer uh, yesterday, a large health co uh, club company that has uh, health club uh, members, and uh, they uh, get emails into uh, the customer service department. And what they do is, what they wanted to do is they wanted to have logic apps intercept that email that comes into customer uh, service and send off a copy to the sentiment engine to automatically say, be able to give the business real-time view in terms of people emailing whether or not they're happy or sad. So it's just, it's just the ability of just diverting that email uh, it's off to a service, and now you can open up a whole view on that. And, it, and, it, and really, it's, um, uh, it, it makes those kinds of integrations extremely uh, powerful and quick to do. And so that's, that's one of the cool things that we saw. The other one uh, was machine learning. And um, the same health club, club company we were talking to said, hey, we, you know, we get a lot of churn in our, mem our health memberships. We get a lot of people that join in January and state of February, and then March they start resigning and quitting our health clubs. And we're trying to figure out how to, how to really understand that. So we took a look at the membership uh, uh, software, the SaaS-based membership software that they use, and found that they have a ton of rich APIs. And so it would be very, um, again, complex, but fast for us to be able to tie into those APIs, grab that membership information. That membership information tells us, 
it gives us some gating information, which means how many times you come into the club and leave the club, which classes you go to, it tracks all that information from your badge. And so we can start taking all of that information, ship it right off to machine learning, and start building predictive analytics based off of who we think is going to resign based off of the patterns of people that have resigned before them and start giving them suggested programs of how to re-engage those user, those customers before they actually resign because they're, they're on uh, uh, a, a list of uh, folks that are, uh, potentially could. Uh, and so those are the, some of the things that we were able to do uh, just by tying in. Uh, to, uh, to some of the Azure services. And as you know, we have Internet of Things and we have Cortana, a lot of really cool uh, technologies that now uh, through, uh, through Logic Apps uh, you have access to. And then, and, but the bigger story is, is we're working with all of those teams to really think about creating really rich experiences. And those are, those are unique services that uh, you're going to be able to, to bring to your uh, companies and to your customers. Okay, we know that integration though isn't one way, right? We know it's two ways. So what happens in that Salesforce example, what happens if you have a, if you have a salesperson that's calling on an account and, uh, and that account says, yeah, I do want to do business with you. Uh, and so the salesperson enters the uh, customer information and their tax ID information and all, and their, uh, all of that uh, collateral information, puts it in Salesforce. How do we get that information now down into that point of sale system so when the customer actually calls up to order something, the CSR has the same information in a completely different uh, system? And so with that, um, what we've done is we've actually created a Logic Apps connector uh, to BizTalk uh, in order to uh, provide that uh, functionality. And that's being announced uh, for the very first time uh, here today. And so with that, I'm going to ask John to come back up and show us a quick demo on how that would work. So, I glossed over a fair few uh, details in the last demo. So let's uh, let's go back. The one thing I one of the things I didn't show you was the actual logic app I was calling. So let's just uh, let's just address that right now. Uh, so I'm just going to pull up my BizTalkToSalesforce.com um, logic app, and I'll just open this up, and you can see how you know straightforward this thing is. And then I'll show you. A little bit around what I had to do and what we've done in the in the Bizzle team to improve and make it easy to to integrate these two things together. So just super simple. I'm sure a lot of people who play with Logic Apps have created something very similar to this. Um, and you know we have the concept in Logic Apps of having a, a trigger which can be an HTTP request based trigger. So as soon as a request comes in, uh, if I as a Logic App, the Logic App executes and then I can do a bunch of work off the back of that. So what I'm doing here is I'm receiving HTTP requests from BizTalk and then I, I'm just creating an object in Salesforce. The object is just you know, a, um, an account that's been created in Salesforce and they have this lovely expression which actually takes the XML that BizTalk passed in and kind of parses it out and turns it into JSON and then turns it into a request to salesforce.com. And then uh, the response is the ID that I get back that you saw in the debug output of the orchestration when I ran that through. Um, so that's kind of one way of doing it, and uh, the reason I didn't show you this earlier is because uh, I, I didn't want to spoil the surprise when Jim was talking about the new connector and does something straight into Logic Apps. So um, what we've actually done, uh, before we jump into the kind of the, the how do I call down from Logic Apps to BizTalk server, is to improve this experience, um, we've created uh, a, a couple of things actually. So let's just close this out and uh, make sure I click on the right one. Um, yeah, I think it's this one, hopefully. And this is going to show you uh, a new action that we've got that makes it easy to work with uh, essentially BizTalk XML data and lets you set um, uh, some of the properties necessary to make sure that subscription works seamlessly across Logic Apps and BizTalk server. So it's very similar, but you'll just notice there's an additional action that I've got in this one when it loads. Right, so pretty similar, but this time I've got this thing called uh, Inco Payload JSON. What this does is it actually lets me um, take the, uh, the output that I get from the Salesforce object and uh, lets me set a uh, schema for that. And when I click on the schema, what it actually does is it enumerates uh, the schemas that I've got in my BizTalk management database on-prem from my BizTalk 2016 server and lets me pick the schema that I'm going to use 
and it'll create an XML document from that and set the root node namespace for that document so when it arrives on BizTalk, it you know, goes nicely through the subscription mechanism and ends up in my uh, orchestration back on-prem. Okay, it gets better. <laughs> So what we built for that, and I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the next session, is we have a REST API over the management database that facilitates that, which is, uh, I think some of you will find that uh, fairly interesting, even on its own. So let's think about it the other way. Um, right. So how do I connect, you know, how do I uh, initiate work from a logic app and then connect down to BizTalk server? We've seen how you do a request response from BizTalk server to logic apps. Now let's think about how we, how we go the other way around. Um, right. So, BizTalk from uh, Salesforce.com. I'm going to open this one up. Uh, I'm also going to switch to a more interesting orchestration. Uh, so, that was the process order. I'm going to switch to this this uh, process order nicely. This is the one that uh, removes some of the goo that I had to do in the first one, just to keep it really simple. Um, and you see, there's there's a fair bit. Uh, more going on here. What I'm actually doing now is I'm doing, I've got a, I've got a database, I've got a customers in it, I've got orders in it. I'm going to look, do a look up in that database to see whether the customer exists. And if it doesn't, I'm going to call through um, to Salesforce. Uh, that's the first part of this. And then, uh, you know, the, the next thing that could happen is that in Salesforce, I could update that account. And then I want, because I've got this database on-prem with these, uh, these uh, customer details in, I actually want to take the data from Salesforce and push it into uh, my on-prem database from Salesforce. So um, to do that, uh, let's just have a look and make sure I've got something in my customer's database. Right, it's empty. So I'm just going to create a new customer, essentially, by um, creating a new order. And you'll see uh, what's going on here when I flip over to the, uh, the output view again. So just push that through. Uh, this time it's received an order, uh, did a customer lookup, it didn't find any customers that matched, it sent the customer to Salesforce, uh, got a response back, actually called some rules in BizTalk, um, which uh, did some discounting and then sent the order to SQL Server and uh, received in parallel a uh, response from Salesforce with the new account that was created and then went and inserted that customer detail into, into SQL on-prem. So if I now run this, hopefully I'll see a customer there. Right, so I see the customer that I had before. If I flip over to um, Salesforce, I'll actually have two, because I did this twice. I have two customers with the same name, so I'll just open the, the, the one I just created. Um, and uh, now you know, what I can do is I can do an edit on this, and I can add um, some more information about the account, such as the uh, billing information, et cetera. Uh, before I do that, let's have a look at the logic app that's going to fire when something changes in salesforce.com. So this time I've got when an object is modified, it's going to trigger a uh, logic app, and that logic app is going to call down to BizTalk server. I've just got a condition here, um, because this logic app will actually fire on any modification, which includes creating a new object in Salesforce. So I just filter out, I check um, whether that... Uh, uh, the credit date is equal to last modified date, so I can determine whether it's a modification to an existing account or not. And if it is, I'm going to uh, use the new action, which lets me uh, pick the schema from BizTalk to uh, create the right uh, shape of XML message to send down to BizTalk server. And this is where it gets interesting, because now I have this new uh, send message, which is our new send connector for BizTalk server. Here, I do a, I have a similar experience over the management database where I can pick a receive location from BizTalk server, from the logic app, uh, that I want to send that data to. And then in the usual way with logic apps, I just specify what the body of that is. I just pick one of the preceding shapes or create uh, the body for that message. Um, and that's it. Um, the way I um, you know, create this connection, if I just scroll down a little bit, um, is you can see down here, you know, it's, got a, it's connected to the BizTalk uh, on-prem orders. And I can create a connection to another BizTalk server. I just provide the information for that server or that server farm and it'll connect down to that through the connector and send data to it. So let's see if that works. Uh, so if I just go and uh, let's just put in the address of our office back in Redmond and click Save on this thing, and let's see what goes on. If I, this time, if I look in Logic Apps first, 
and I see uh, when this thing fired, let's see uh, 8.44, so I'm not quite there yet. Let's flip over and see if anything's happening in BizTalk. Not quite. So let's give it a second or so for this thing to fire. Salesforce Adapt is polling, so it's just going to poll and, uh, and pick up the, um, the modification that I just made to that account. Worked first thing this morning, so we'll, uh, we'll see if it still does. Interesting. See, this is Salesforce problem, not ours. I'll just point that out. <laughs> will be Charles and his deployment last night. <laughs> <laughs> F5. Yeah, it just refreshes the whole thing. Right. Aha, uh -huh. hang on, here we go. Right, receive customer update. So the logic app is fired. BizHawks received the customer update. It should have done slightly more than that. Because uh, what it... No, the customer's there. Oh, you're absolutely right. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. People are paying attention. Awesome. I'm going to do it again. So that's why, oh, there you go. That's a, that's a demonstration of the error handling I have behind this thing. Oh, Salesforce as well. Thanks, Jeff. Let's do that again. It should be quicker this time. Let's create another one. And watch that go round. Right, customer inserted. Okay. So I've got a customer, I go with Salesforce. I'll get quicker at it this time. Got another one. You see, I'm not actually doing the check in Salesforce here. I already have it. That was, uh, you can imagine how that would work from a logic app perspective. Uh, go and save that down again. Right. Let's see what happens. Let's give it a few seconds. I know the suspense is killing everybody. Right. That's better. Receive customer update. Found the customer this time. Uh, send the customer update. It's uh, just using the SQL WCF adapter on prem to uh, in BizTalk through that orchestration. So now, if it says it's updated the customer, if I flip back, you can see that there are the details of the customer city and zip code that it got from Salesforce.com. Okay. I love live demos. I really do. I love live demos. All right, thank you, John. Um, so again, think of the um, connectivity now that you have with, with being able to trigger on anything coming back down, right? So a common scenario is a customer, let's say a customer wants to send you files and they want to use Dropbox. So let's say they create a folder just for you uh, in their Dropbox account. They can just drop a, a file in Dropbox. You can have Logic Apps just monitor that one folder in, uh, in their Dropbox. And they see a file, grab it, bring it down, give it to BizTalk, do whatever, party on it all you want. So it's, I mean, that, those kinds of scenarios. Um, so it just, uh, it just opens up a tremendous amount of capabilities in terms of when you start really thinking about um, the kinds of different scenarios that you've always wanted to accomplish. Uh, next, um, we, I talked a little bit about those of you that are familiar with BizTalk services. Uh, we have taken, uh, taken all of that functionality and features that were in BizTalk services and uh, bringing it into Logic Apps. Um, so uh, all of the standard uh, things that you're used to today. Uh, and we're happy to announce that, the, that we're calling that the Enterprise Integration Pack. It will be the first add-on for, uh, for Logic Apps. Um, so when, you start, when we announce the new um, um, uh, pricing model and everything for Logic Apps, which, which will be coming out soon, 
uh, that'll be the, one of the very first uh, add-ons uh, capabilities that we have for that, for that product. And uh, what I thought I'd do is just, John, you want to feel like coming up and doing one last demo? I know I'm out of time, but I'm running into your demo. Uh, so. Uh, Later today. So, uh, I mean, a couple of things here just before we move off this slide. So, uh, you know, BizTalk Server has, has been a, an EDI engine for like you know forever, like uh, over a decade. Um, Logic Apps has had EDI capabilities. We we provided that in V1 of Logic Apps, and then we're now uh, you know pleased to show you what the incarnation that looks like as we refresh the design and the experience in Logic Apps uh, with V2 and how we're lighting up EDI and B2B capabilities in Logic Apps. And one of the things we're introducing uh, as part of that is this thing called the integration account. The integration account is essentially a, a container to allow you, you know, management plane to be able to uh, put artifacts in it, things like maps and schemas, certificates, partners, and, and trading agreements, and then reference those from a logic app. So the idea is you can, you can, uh, you can upload your maps, and incidentally, they can be maps from BizTalk Server. You can put them in there, and then you can refer to them, do transformation and other things. There are some great new capabilities that we'll be talking about this week around XML processing and logic apps. Um, and then uh, do your EDI processing um, where uh, you can refer to uh, partners and agreements in the integration account and do the EDI processing in the logic app. So let's, uh, let's see how that looks. Okay. So, it's going to open up this logic app. This is uh, an inbound 850, so this is a, this is a X12 purchase order um, it, uh, it's going to deal with. I'll just show you what this looks like. So, uh, I'm actually using AS2, so I've got an HTTP endpoint. I'm going to post in that HTTP endpoint with uh, an encoded message. So, this is an X12 message encoded over AS2. Um, and then, it obviously has to unpack all of that. Um, and then, I end up with the, uh, the message itself. And then I can do some transformation on that. I can wrap that wherever I like. Uh, just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to send a response back, and the response contains the MDN of the, uh, uh, you know, of the, the message received uh, to, uh, to acknowledge the receipt. Uh, so for the uh, benefit of time, I'm just going to show you what this looks like in Postman. If I um, send in this message, you can see it in the flat file format uh, that I'm going to uh, post in. You see the response comes back at the bottom. I can find where where to drag. You can see I don't know why it's gone at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, that didn't help. Seem to lost my scroll bars. But you can see that the uh, information that's come back. And if I showed you the logic app execution. Flip back over. You can actually uh, trace through everything that happened in the logic app that did that EDI processing. So if I look at the logic app and I look at the output, uh, in the response, let's take a look at that. You can see all the information that's going back uh, over AS2 um, for the uh, for the flow for the 850 receipt over AS2 and AS12. Okay, that was it. All right. Actually, one thing. Sorry, Jim. One thing I will quickly show you to see where that information came from is uh, the integration account itself. So, if I open this up. Uh, this is a portal experience, so you can see here's the integration account. Uh, I have schemas, maps, partners, and certificates in the account. So the schemas obviously allow me to uh, do things like um, create XML documents, to do transformations between XML documents, and also uh, it enables us with our, uh, provide our flat file support as well. Uh, then we have maps which for the transformations um, and, uh, and the partners and obviously certificates necessary in order to be able to do the, uh, the EDI flow end to end um, between trading partners. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah, give it up. Give it up for John. He's like, he's like, do you really want me to do all three of the demos in the keynote? What do, why do we have Jeff and Kevin here? I mean, that's exactly what he, oh, I, did you, 
I'm sorry. You, was I not supposed to share that? Okay. Thanks, John. Um, all right, one more thing I wanted to, I always want to do the one more thing thing. I mean, it just kind of seemed appropriate. Uh, we are getting ready to go into a uh, private preview of the Enterprise Integration Pack for Logic Apps. Um, if any of you would like to join us for that private preview, uh, just email John uh, directly and he'll put you uh, on the private list. We're not going to announce this through any newsletter or anything. It's only for those of you that are in the audience as a thank you for coming all this way. If this is something that you're interested in, we want to make sure that you are the ones that get in. So just uh, email John or, or, uh, and uh, we'll do it on a first come, first serve basis uh, based on that. And uh, uh, love to have you. Uh, help us dial that product in before we, uh, uh, we GA. Um, okay, I wanted to just kind of give you a little bit of a, a th think more about this, the Microsoft integration story and, and the products that it, can tail, it entails, and also just call out some of the folks that are also here uh, visiting. So we've got uh, Kevin, Jeff, and John who handle the BizTalk and Logic apps. Um, even though I tease John that he's the PM for BizTalk, he's really more than that. He is um, handling all of our enterprise, um, uh, he's, our, he's our enterprise thought leader when it comes to uh, the kinds of orchestrations that you do in BizTalk and, and what, do we, what we need to do in Logic Apps in order to support that. Um, so, uh, you know, there are going to be times when you're going to want to do that workload up in the cloud and have, have the scalability of the cloud. And uh, we want to understand which of those, uh, which of the, or which of the workload you, you do in BizTalk, wh what should come first in Logic Apps. And so John's driving the thought leadership on that, working very closely with Kevin and Jeff on, on the Logic Apps product. So it really is a collaboration. They really are, uh, they're all joint co-owners of, uh, of Logic Apps. And then we have Vladimir here for the APIM. Uh, Dan is here for uh, Azure Service Bus. Chris. Uh, uh, Chris Anderson, back in the corner, uh, representing functions, be showing you some functions, and we can also talk, I'll pretty much talk Azure services, and then Paul Larson is somewhere in the room, I think, as well, uh, handling our connection uh, uh, team, and can answer questions about some of our connectors. Um, so where are we going? Well, uh, we want to talk a little bit in terms of where we are today, where we are, where we're going tomorrow, and then where, what, where, where our journeys going. So, you know, today we have BizTalk 2016 uh, in CTP1. We've got uh, BizTalk on IaaS that we're very excited about, uh, about as well. And, uh, and then we have Logic Apps with over uh, 30 connectors. And that's kind of where we are today uh, in, a, in a current state of what's, what's available. Uh, and then in terms of tomorrow, uh, we are adding Visual Studio support to Logic Apps. So uh, you're going to be hearing a, a lot about that um, uh, over the next uh, a day as we show you that, uh, um, or talk more deeply about that. Uh, the team is working really, really hard to get that into preview. Uh, so you're, that's going to be a major piece. It's something that's probably the number one request uh, because it gives us uh, release management capabilities within Logic Apps, uh, uh, probably our number one request. Um, in terms of uh, additional uh, connectivity, we're adding on-prem connectivity for Logic Apps. So if you want to be able to get access to your on-prem SharePoint, your on-prem SQL Server from, uh, from an Azure service, we're going to be uh, uh, talking more deeply about that connectivity uh, is coming as well. Um, and then we have more uh, SaaS-based uh, connectors coming. Uh, the team is, is uh, pushing them out as fast as they can, but you're going to you know, every two weeks you're going to see more connectors just light up and more announcements around those connectors. We'll, just, we'll, we'll ha actually start having some challenges keeping up with, I think, the documentation on, on all of those. Um, and then we're making continuous investments in BizTalk and Logic Apps. Um, and it's just, you know, we're, we're really starting to look at that relationship and we're going to do more and more in terms of making uh, those products better. Where we're going in, in terms of the future that I wanted to call out was we are building a third-party connector ecosystem where we're going to allow our partners to start uh, uh, publishing their own uh, connectors because we know that we can't scale as a team and do all of the connectors for all of the SaaS-based applications. So uh, we're working on the framework uh, and the marketplace system for that uh, so people know exactly uh, what uh, models to follow to, uh, to be able to, to make their uh, connectors available. Um, that also means it's going to open up an opportunity 
for people to write custom connectors for uh, other enterprise applications because we can't do them all and there might be a, a potential a great uh, market opportunity for our partners uh, to, uh, 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 to be able to provide a connector and the services behind that for companies. Um, so there's, you know, when you think of verticals and you think of all those vertical systems, uh, there's probably potential opportunity there uh, for, uh, for partners. Uh, then we're you know, creating that unified experience between BizTalk and Logic Apps, trying to not you know, change the language in terms of how we do those things, uh, make it a consistent. So if you know BizTalk, you'll pick up Logic Apps um, uh, quickly. So we're really thinking, thinking about that. And then, um, and then we're also taking a look. I'll be doing the, the session right before the, right, you never want to do the session right before the beer, but it looks like I'm doing the session right before the beer as well, where we're going to talk a little bit about our partner ecosystem and how we're refreshing that whole partner program. Uh, we would love to get your input, and that's going to be more of an interactive session. Uh, I promise it'll be fun. It won't be hardly any slides uh, in that one. So um, during the next three days, uh, you know, we really are here. We're on a journey. Microsoft is really on a journey, and that journey means that we want to start by listening to you. Uh, this is, you know, we want this to be um, our Microsoft integration story, not our Microsoft integration story. So that means well, we, need to hear, we need to hear from you. We want to know what we're doing right, what we're not thinking about, where we need to, you know, if our priorities are, are right, we want to hear that. If our priorities need to be readjusted, we want to hear that. Um, so we brought a big team with us um, here, and we did that uh, because we really wanted to uh, connect with you. We wanted to be able to spend time with each and every one of you. Any of you, any of you that want to talk, we have such a big team here that we should be able to find that hallway time uh, to talk while we're here. Um, and then uh, I told you I was going to talk a little bit about our development leaders. Uh, we did bring our development uh, leadership with us today, so I'd like Charles and Sanjiv to come up to the stage because I want everybody to see what they look like. Um, so we didn't just bring our program managers, we brought our, our uh, this is, this, these are the guys that really make it happen for us. A uh, couple things I'm going to say about these guys, they, they didn't know about this, but uh, um, Charles is, is brilliant and he's great to work with, but he's also one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's approachable, he can, he can go as deep as you want to go, though, be careful. He's super approachable uh, and uh, super knowledgeable. He runs. He's on, he, uh, his team's involved both Logic Apps and uh, uh, BizTalk. So, um, so, and, uh, and he's just been, he's been a great partner to have and I appreciate you very much, Charles. Sanjiv uh, is our uh, uh, dev manager for our BizTalk team um, and uh, he's gonna be very excited to tell you about the uh, headcount that he's getting and, and that he's been hiring and, and you can see he's smiling. I've, you know, he wasn't <laughs> smiling like that when I first met him in February. Um, and he's been, he's been smiling a lot more. And, and just uh, uh, what I want you to do, though, is I want you to, to, to grab both of these guys and tell them what you want, all right? I want them to hear it from you. I don't want all of the requirements management to come through the program uh, leadership. I want, I, I want them to be able to hear it from the customers as well and the partners as well. So please take, take a moment and, and bend these guys' ears. That's why they're here. And uh, thank you guys for both getting on a plane to come. I appreciate it very much. Okay, you can you can go sit down, and then we all, we obviously we have a great a great group of speakers. I was I was super impressed with the with all the MVPs and the sessions and stuff that you have. I mean, what a great three days! Thank you for 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 putting this on. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here. Um, so what's next? Well, we want a couple things in terms of uh, signing up for the the private preview. Please download the BizTalk server uh, CTP if you haven't, and give us some feedback on that. Try Logic Apps if, uh, if you haven't done that. Uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show.